So I'm going to get started um, pretty quick. And um, my name is Diane Mueller, and I am, is the sound okay with this? Is I'm holding it close enough to my face? Yes. So I'm Diane Mueller. I'm the director of community development for the Cloud Platform BU. Um, which doesn't mean anything to hardly anybody, but um, I'm also the community development person, point person for OKD, um, which we'll get to explain what that is. How many of you were in the OKD working group meeting the other day? Good. And how many of you just came from the Fedora CoreOS workshop? Good. All right. So. Um, Everything we're going to talk about today is very near and dear to my heart because it, it's talking about collaboration between two communities that I love, the OpenShift community and the Fedora um, community, um, and the OKD4 and Fedora CoreOS um, have been working very, very closely today. So I'm going to give a big shout out to a lot of people, Benjamin Gilbert, um, who, who isn't here, at, here, so hi Benjamin if you're watching the recording, and Ben Briard and um, a ton of other people who have been doing a lot of work to make this happen. We're really lucky to have uh, Christian Glombeck here with us today, who is the lead, um, along with Vadim, who's going to do the demo after he gets it booted up. Um, so I'm not going to take credit for anything today, except um, maybe making them do some slides that make some sense to me. So I'm going to do this. So it's really been a very big collaboration to get to this point here. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what OKD4 is, how it came about. Um, uh, there's been a long, illustrious, sometimes not so happy, um, history with OpenShift Origin and moving over to OKD. Um, and we, ha we kind of dropped the ball with three after 3.11. And so I I'll apologize for that on behalf of everybody. But now we're getting ready to roll out um, a, a 4.0 or 4.x, which will probably be right now is 4.3. Um, it's 4.4 already because we're all, okay, we did master, that. But, yeah. So things change pretty quickly, but um, we're really very, and as you can tell, I'm very excited about this because I've waited a long time to get all of these um, ducks in a row, so to speak. So we're going to talk a little through all of that. We're going to talk a little bit about Fedora Core OS, and then we're going to make Vadim come up and um, do a demo of um, so that you realize it's not all smoke and mirrors. It actually works. There is a preview. And we'll talk a little bit about the preview, how to do stuff, how to get the preview, how to do um, and give feedback to us, and the road ahead. And then I'll pitch one more time the OKD working group. So um, what is OKD? So you probably, how many of you remember um, the early days when it was OpenShift Origin? All right, we've been around. Um, then we had a little bit of a thing with uh, marketing and legal, and we had to change the name um, due to some legal marketing stuff. And um, we, um, when we pivoted from being a Ruby on Rails, MongoDB platform as a service um, to being a Kubernetes-based platform, um, we renamed it to OKD, which I jokingly refer to as OK Diane, because um, they gave up trying to find another name. But as you know, the K, we can't use the word Kubernetes in the name of anything. That's why you get PKS, OKD, EKS, and all the other ones. So OKD is what we stuck on. Um, and this distribution is um, slightly different than o OCP, because OCP, and we'll talk a little bit about that, runs on, well, <coughs> CoreOS, and we run on um, Fedora CoreOS. So hence the relationship between the two families. And so. Um, this is what marketing lets us talk about. It is the origin community distribution of Kubernetes that powers Red Hat OpenShift, and it's um, the same code base as what we run on online, dedicated, OCP, um, Arrow, uh, Red Hat, no, Azure, Red Hat, OpenShift, I think that's what that acronym stands for. So it's really, it's all the same code base, but there is a real, the real difference is the Fedora that's under the hood. Um, so when you look at an architectural diagram for um, OpenShift, you'll see we talk about um, OpenShift v4 moved to a very operator-centric um, deployment and the services. So it's all the automation is um, using operators. So how many of you are familiar with the operator framework? Good. So we won't go into that. So we are really using that CoreOS operator pattern to power um, the 4.0 version of OpenShift and hence OKD4 as well. 
but the difference really is, again, Fedora Core OS. Um, and that makes it something that um, is much more community-based. It's much more open source. There is no um, requirement to use RHEL um, or RHEL Core OS. And um, hopefully, we can do a few other operating systems there as well. So I'm not going to steal too much more thunder. I'm going to pass off. I got the you get that? Does uh -huh. it work? Yes, I think. Are you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, perfect. I'll take the clicker. There you go. Click away. Um, so. Yeah, what is Fedora Core OS? Uh, what's, what's the difference uh, between OCP and, and OKD in that sense? Um, so Fedora Core OS is the base OS for OKD, right now for OKD on Fedora Core OS. It'll be the first version. We're open to actually um, doing more, supporting more base OSs in the future. Um, we have this process in the working group for that, uh, or sub-working group. So anybody interested, any community interested can actually create their own sub-working group to support more OSs. Right now, we start off with Fedora Core OS because it makes the most sense for us as Red Hat because we want to uh, really test out our stuff, the OpenShift code base, uh, on, on the Fedora kernel, on the Fedora packages, get early feedback that way. So what is Fedora Core OS? It's a new Fedora edition. Um, it's a purpose-built OS for running containerized workloads um, at scale. Uh, we've taken a lot of the philosophy uh, of uh, container Linux um, by CoreOS um, and all the learnings we've taken from the Atomic Host project, and we've sort of put it together into something new, even better, um, which is Fedora CoreOS. So we, we are based on RPM OS tree and Ignition. Those are two very important technologies we, uh, we use uh, to do this. So the mission statement is an automatically updating minimal, monolithic, container-focused operating system designed for clusters, but also operable, standalone, optimized for Kubernetes, but also great without it. And the different, what, what's RHEL CoreOS then? What, what's the difference? So RHEL CoreOS is an implementation detail, a component of OpenShift OCP, the product. You don't get it standalone. It's just in there, and you don't really touch it at all because we have this great new thing with the operators that sort of puts our cluster on autopilot and you don't even notice the, the operating system because it gets updated through the cluster. Um, and we're, yeah, I think we're incredibly prou proud of that because it's just, um, it's an awesome concept. Um, so RHEL Core OS uh, updates along with OpenShift. It's one life cycle bound together. It's no, not a different, but yeah, you can't really uh, split it out of that. Um, so, and it's based on the RHEL package set. So it's a RPM OS tree composed under the hood um, made out of RHEL packages. Um, Fedora Core OS on the other side um, is um, made out of the Fedora packages. So uh, the build system and tooling is essentially the same between the two, uh, but Fedora Core OS is also intended as a standalone OS, uh, which Red Hat uh, core OS, RHEL core OS isn't. A little bit more about the philosophy uh, behind that. Uh, we wanted an immutable infrastructure um, just to, yeah, sandbox everything, make it, make it really secure. Um, so the customizations are done at the, in the provis provisioning really early on. And uh, yeah, there's no concept of, of changing configuration, you just uh, reprovision the node, essentially. Uh, we have some, it's semi-immutable, so we can actually change some, some of the files, but usually you would just uh, reboot that. And we use Ignition for our, uh, well, the, the, first boot uh, the first boot configuration. Uh, we use Ignition for that, that. We don't use cloud init, that may be a name uh, known to you. We use Ignition instead Declar to declaratively um, configure the state of our machines. Um, it's aimed at containerized workloads, so the uh, software doesn't run directly on the host. It's, it's a, in a container. Uh, and so we, we can really slim, slim the base down. For example, we don't have Python in Fedora Core OS, and I think that's a great, uh, yeah, that was a great effort. Um, and we did it. It's Python. It's snake-free. Um, yeah, snake-free Fedora. Uh, you can, of course, run it in a container and 
so yeah, OS versions are an implementation detail. We sort of have this uh, OS tree commit one representing one state of the one compose of the operating system, then you update to another compose, um, and that gets done automatically as well. So, Vadim, uh, are we ready for the demo already? Okay, let's do the switcheroo here. So hi, my name is Vadim Rutkovsky. I work on um, lots of things in OpenShift, and one of them is uh, OKD. Um, if you're familiar with OCP4, you might have seen those pages a few times, and uh, OKD4 is not much different from OCP, except for a few replacement things, which are, uh, in fact, branding. If you notice on the upper left, uh, you can use custom distribution names for that. Um, and another important thing is that we run on top of Fedora CoreOS, and these are the things reported by our kubelet, the name of the OS image, and um, one of the freshest kernels we got. Um, since it's based on OCP 4.4, you would see that the cryo version and kubelet versions are 117, 117.1 in fact. <coughs> And these are the main differences from basically OCP uh, 4. We can also apply, since um, OKD 4 does not really require a pull secret from Red Hat, you can uh, download it without setting any pull secret. That means you won't be sending a telemetry results as in uh, OCP 4, and uh, you won't be able to access um, Red Hat operators there. So once you go to uh, operator hub, you would only see the community uh, operators available here. Where's my bill going? It's still going. Um, that means we can also apply additional changes specifically to um, OKD. For instance, in our installations, we default to uh, SDN called OVN because uh, that would ev um, effectively would become the standard for OCP. Um, now it's in tech preview phase, but in order to experiment and let people uh, get fresh things, we default to it. You can, of course, change it, switch it back to uh, OpenShift SDN and some more things. Um, there are a few more interesting ideas we could play with. For instance, um, Cgroups v2 support. Uh, the last thing remaining for the OKD is a patched kubelet, and we can ship that in our machine OS contents enable cgroups v2, and uh, that would be, I think, the last remaining piece before it ends upstream, and we can play with that already right now. My builds are still running, so I cannot show you the game. But um, the idea is that... Wrong button. Um, the idea for the OKD4 is basically the very same as an OCP. It's based on operators, and um, every time, and the operators control everything, so uh, you cannot change most of the parts of the installation yourself. You have to pass it through the operator's CR, and if the operator doesn't allow you to do that, uh, then it would be reverted. So, um, unfortunately, due to the poor Conference Wi-Fi, we're gonna show you the game, but we wrote a game where you shoot ducks and every duck represents a pod a deployment or a daemon set. Um, so every time you shoot it, the 
cluster operators try to bring them back, and the idea is that you have to shoot as many ducks as possible before the cluster crashes because it's running right on top of it. And uh, we found quite a lot of bugs on using that game. Um, we also later found out that it's in fact a multiplayer game because we're all shooting pods in one single cluster. So the mo mobile phones you have, uh, the better. And it's very easy to tap with your fingers. Um, hopefully we could be able to play with it. We just have to wait a little bit more. So let's hit with the questions. There's one. Um, does OKD use Syncati and uh, Cincinnati from um, Fedora CoreOS things? Uh, the answer is no to both, but it's a bit more complex. Um, <laughs> so the official OCP installations, they use a thing we call uh, Cincinnati, which is uh, making a graph for users, which versions can they upgrade from and upgrade to. So we don't have that in OKD because we use a more simplified version called True Lease Controller. Um, at this point of preview, we don't test um, we, we don't test upgrades yet. Once we're ready, we will start testing, and that means in your clusters you would see uh, that you are able to upgrade from one nightly to the other. Um, on the cluster level itself, we don't use Tsinkati. In fact, we have to disable it, otherwise uh, we would be bound to Fedora CoreOS updates. And just to add to that, Zincati is the update agent that Fedora CoreOS usually uses to apply updates. Um, yeah, we disable that because we have a, a different updating mechanism in the cluster use case shared with OCP. Um, and for Cincinnati, technically, it would be, uh, yeah, it would work together. We just don't have a dedicated uh, instance. Yet. Just, you make it sound very easy. Uh, let me, but let, me yeah. <laughs> but let me let me review the the question. So, if you have your own builder for the machine OS content, uh, you and your own registry to store images and your own Cincinnati-like system, which is literally an engine serving a, a JSON specified format, you would get your own OKD-like thing. You just cannot call it OKD. You have to come up with a better name. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but other than that, yes, it's totally independent from the rest because uh, you would be effectively mutating the release payload and uh, that would be yours and you can store it anywhere. Yes, true. Uh, next question from Langdon. Um, the question was if we disable the telemetry and how to set it up. Uh, we don't disable the Fedora pinger, but we do disable the Syncati service. So the machine doesn't still pings back to Fedora saying I'm a Fedora machine. Um, and it, but it doesn't update using Syncati. The problem is that we would like to have this to be more specific uh, so that it's not just an average Fedora CoreOS machine. We want to say that it's a part of OKD4 cluster. We just need a better name and uh, and found how to uh, how to both privately and securely report that, and how the Fedora would benefit from knowing that those are pure cloud Fedora CoreOS machines and these are part of the cluster and managed by OKD. Um, it's a bug. Uh, we need to fix it. Other questions. We will we will get to the contributing part uh, in a bit. So I'll is it, is maybe it just the type. Demo? Yeah, right. that's that's on the slope. Once we switch back from the demo, um, we'll get we'll, we'll get to to the part of uh, how we want to enable uh, community contributions and um, working together with with the community and the Red Hat external you can people. Can well. that shortly right now before like properly set it up. Does that work? 
uh, about the contributions. I, oh, you got the slides. Well, I, I do have slides for it. Um, so, Let's go with the oh, did, well, we can do we can do the questions now and just. Uh, Part of the demo goes goes later. So, kit with okay. The, um, kit with well, let. Well, I, w I would say let's uh, let's uh, do the rest of the questions now. There were a few more. Steve. Uh, so we are essentially reusing um, that. Oh yeah, um, there is the the. I do have. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we in in OpenShift we have uh, the UPI and IPI installation paths, which is user provided infrastructure and installer provision infrastructure. Uh, so what we've done in the past in OpenShift is usually one version of OpenShift uh, gets th there would be the UPI first, and the next version will support IPI fully automated installs, um, and we, we're essentially. Although we've right now forked the installer, it is the same code base. So we, the, ga the, the goal is to support all the platforms uh, that are supported in OpenShift, uh, in OCP, in OKD as well. So, uh, and eventually we want to lead a, be a, an upstream for OpenShift and even have even more platforms enabled or have the platforms enabled with OKD first. Right now we're not there yet. We're in the preview phase. But uh, yeah, it's the same code base. It's, but we, we, you get both UPI and IPR, IPI installs for OKD. Cool. So we replaced the host OS with the Fedora for us, but um, like the platform is contained, you know, has a bunch of container images. What's the base of OS for all the containers? The base OS for all the containers? Yeah. Uh, right now we, we use, for most of the operator, oh, uh, sorry, uh, what is the base OS for all the containers we use? Um, in the platform, like the operators and everything that sort of runs as a container in the cluster. And we use um, mostly UBI base images at the moment. And I think that's not going to change in the foreseeable future. So that's exactly the same uh, that is used in OCP as well. There's some containers that are RHEL based uh, that we sort of replace with CentOS containers right now. We'll do that with Fedora containers in the long run, but that's only very few. Uh, containers that are that differ in in that way, um, so UBI uh, containers right now. I can connect. Um, so where do we get the packages from? Since we're using a rail base. Do we ship RL specific things which are not supposed to if, since they are not part of UBI? We don't ship them. We replace them with uh, fake images. At this point, it's like four or five of them. Um, I think it's mostly Metal Cube. So what we do instead, we ask Metal Cube uh, community to make CentOS based or anything which is free to redistribute, replace them and promote it into our namespace. So. The OKD bits from, for instance, OpenStack, they get and they are built from free, uh, from community project RDO, while the OCP is using the official uh, Red Hat uh, images. So some images may diverge, but they are supposed to be tracking the very same level of code just rebuilt using different ways. File a bug. If if there you find something we should not redistribute or you don't have a license to uh, to to reuse, that's a bug in OKD. We will drop that image and make you come up with a better one. <laughs> Any more questions at this point? I think the demo yeah, looks hopefully. looks ready. Uh, so let's try this. Something like that. <laughs> oh, no, I can't wait for that. 
So I'll just give you a few more minutes so that I could play it along with you. Yeah, I keep shooting them ducks, and um, what we see here is that somebody, somebody told me. Cluster operation losses would notice that will bring the those missing pods up, and we would still keep on shooting the ducks. But that's apparently not what happened during the live demo. Don't ever do that. Uh, any more questions? soon as possible. <laughs> Is there a um, time-based release date? Uh, no, not yet, but we have high hopes that it's all the things will merge into 4.5, let's say. Yeah. Um, the problem is that, um, the problem is Ignition 3 spec. And in order to make um, Arcos catch up, we need a lot of things as a coordinated effort, we need them all merged. So for some time, we'll definitely be living with a forked installer and a forked MCO at minimum. Hopefully, we won't fork more things. But other than that, that's how, that's how it goes. Do we have do we have a tool to scan vulnerabilities? That's outside of the scope of the OKD4 project. But uh, I, I, if I remember correctly, some scanning has been added in 4.3. That's basically we follow OCP4 on that. If they add a tool, we we automatically get it. If you want us to add some new operator, which would be useful for the community, for instance, there is an idea to automatically embed uh, OpenShift ACME as a deployment so that people could get uh, Let's Encrypt certificates on their uh, routes. OCP4 cannot do that, OKD4 would love to do that. Um, as for scanning vulnerabilities, um, I don't think we have a story about that. So there would be a compliance operator. I'm not sure if I like the name in my OKD cluster, but am, we'll see. Can we rename it into community friend or something like that? <laughs> There will be uh, a compliance operator. And was it right that that'll be on the operator hub at some point um, that will do this, the vulnerability, vulnerability the scanning for you that was to answer that question? Um, it's not there. It's a work in progress. So there will be one operator uh, sometime later. All right. Uh, next point on the agenda. Uh, 
try the OKD4 preview. As, as we've mentioned, we're in the OKD4 preview stage right now. And you can go to okd.io, uh, click on downloads, and you'll get uh, redirected to the page that tells you exactly what you have to do to install OKD at this moment. Um, that is the OKD repository on GitHub. And that repository is also the, our bug tracker. So anything, any, any bugs, any feature requests you have, or you find, uh, file an issue, or a pull, well, you can't really file pull requests on that one. There's no code in that repository. But file an issue on there, and we will triage it, um, give it to the right team internally uh, in OpenShift uh, to, uh, to fix the bug. So yeah, give feedback on that repository. You'll, yeah, and you'll get an, uh, there's a getting started guide uh, how, how to install your OKD4 preview cluster at this. And and if you have feedback on our getting started guide, just log an issue and we will update it or make a pull request and we will do it. We really would like, would like your feedback on what's missing. Exactly. Um, and then you'll hopefully be able to contribute through the OKD working group and your work will be part of one of the releases. This is our release page. Um, you'll, that, that's all the CI builds, uh, built in our Prowl um, CI system. And uh, you can, Pick any of those, preferably try a green one. Uh, that makes more sense, I think. Um, so yeah, uh, let's take a look ahead what's, what's coming next. So we have the OKD roadmap. We agreed on that with the community uh, a few months ago. And we've actually, uh, there were three, three phases. Phase zero was the MVP. And actually, that was done with our first preview release. Uh, a little while back. So we're in phase one right now, and that is just uh, enabling, uh, no, sorry. Uh, that's a, a first uh, stable, ver to creating a first stable version uh, of OKD. We're in that phase right now, phase one. And um, in phase two, that's actually gonna be more interesting for the community. That'll be after the GA release. We really wanna use the OKD working group as a, as a point of contact with, with, uh, with the OpenShift organization so external people can actually contribute to OpenShift. That's always been a problem with the Origin 3.x releases because that was essentially repackaging. And anything that got fixed there never really naturally made it down, trickled down into the product. So we as Red Hat really wanted to make OKD an upstream uh, to, to enable that and facilitate those contributions because that, that'll be fixed on, on the Fedora base or in the OpenShift code base and it'll naturally become part of the product. Uh, that's a, yeah, the feedback cycle we really want to introduce here. Uh, so the roadmap is where it's a work in progress, of course. Uh, phase two will be revisited when, once we reach that phase because it's just, right now it's just a sort of catch-all after GA. So we want to add projects uh, like OpenShift Acme uh, to OKD that really make sense for the community. And we want to, um, in general, use OKD then um, for technology incubation uh, in collaboration with our community. Uh, because in, in the long run, OKD is supposed to become a super set of functionality of OCP. So we'll have sort of the new stuff landing in OKD first. And then once it's really vetted and uh, proven to work and you know useful, it'll become part of the, the product OCP. And yeah, the OKD working group is sort of where we all gather. Uh, every two weeks we have a, a working group meeting um, to discuss the, the progress we've made, the, the problems we've encountered, uh, and also get get feedback from the community, from people that have tested it. Um, yeah. And, and those are your bi-weekly. Um, so if you join the, sorry. I always think I'm talking loud enough. Um, they're bi-weekly meetings. There is a Google group. Um, and the bottom there, if you sign up, you'll get announcements. And if you go to the next page, um, we use, um, in the, the repo itself, we use the projects process to add um, uh, issues into the engineering side of things, and we also have, uh, an, is the next one the agenda one? No. 
yeah, this is the one I was thinking about. If you have a topic like the compliance operator and you're ready to come <coughs> and talk to us, just um, let us know and we'll add you to the agenda. Um, everything in the first column is how to get into the meetings and that. And we also have, if you can't make our time, which is 9 a.m. Pacific or 1700 UTC, we record everything. So, um, and it's up on the OpenShift Commons playlist and YouTube, and I, I try and get them up there in a timely fashion along with the slides. But um, really, the meetings are open to anybody, and we are really looking for more external contribution, especially from end users um, who are testing on different configurations. Um, Vadim had a great um, saying the other day that OKD's slogan should be, choose your own adventure. So we can only test so much. You're going to use different DNS, different storages, different, you know, different configurations and stacks when you do this. And we need, to, um, we are sort of a party of, a small party of engineers and people who love OKD. Um, and we need your help. So um, we would love it if you can continue to contribute. Are we open, are we going to say anything about the engineering stuff, I think that's it. And then this is a strange little clicker. I think that might be the last slide yeah, too. This is the last slide. Cool. So yeah, we have the, the second board we have is the engineering. This is the community board and the second one is the, is it both community? Oh no, this is the. The contribute one has engineering well, issues. Yeah, the, I think the link is wrong though for this one. Um, well, we have a second board, which is the engineering one. Uh, we sort of, uh, all the bugs and issues that are open are on this, on, on this Kanban. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it should be github.com slash orgs slash openshift slash projects slash one. It's the first project in, in the openshift organization. <laughs> the only uh, Kanban project in there. Uh, Six years at Red Hat, I've never had T-shirts printed. So, but for this, for this group, I'm going to get T-shirts done um, somewhere, and we'll we'll just we'll fig figure out how to get them to you. But we really do need as much help as we can getting this tested and out the door um, in, in the next month or so. So it's a lot of scrambling going on. Yeah, we're close. We're getting there. Um, yeah, it's just a couple of end-to-end -end tests that haven't actually made it into the product, but we're. We're building off of master, so we have to make them work for us as well. So, um, yeah. The good news is it's not just us. It's well, yeah, it's, it's the master. Right, the great thing is we, we are sharing the exact same code base. Um, right now, we've only forked the install and the machine config operator, but we're actively working on remerging those. Um, that may take some more time, but yeah, I'm, I'm very confident we can get there. Uh, and, well, this quarter or next one. Do you want to talk a little bit about the conversation you had about OpenCC and Oh, well, yeah. Uh, I, I mentioned before, we have this process in the working group to create sub-working groups. And if there's any, any community interested, even outside of Fedora, communities like CentOS or SUSE or even Debian, um, they would be well, yeah, we, we would sort of uh, give them a way to, to build their own uh, operating system with our tools based on their packaging and packages, and then uh, sort of give them a way to, to run OpenShift on their operating system. So uh, right now, well, we use RPM OS tree and Ignition, so uh, SUSE and CentOS are obviously the best candidates uh, to do that. Uh, because it'll be rather easy for them. Debian may be a little bit more work. Um, but we definitely want to support those efforts as well and have uh, as many base operating systems for, for those OKD clusters in the longer run. Um, again, as, as Red Hat, it makes most sense for us to do it on Fedora ourselves and you know, put that out there. Uh, so that's what we're working on right now. But yeah, in the longer run, uh, I think the CentOS community will probably want want something running on CentOS. SUSE might want that too, and Debian people might want that as well. Are you experiencing problems with, it, with change rate in Fedora running on Fedora? So yeah, sometimes, uh, well, things move very fast in Fedora, and we, don't, we aren't always aware of everything that's changing. For example, last week we had a bug 
when uh, the, the container runtime used by Portman in Fedora was switched from run C to C run, and that just uh, created a bug for us. And we, you know, it took us a while to figure that out. Vadim actually figured that out. Um, as, as always, he's just, he looks at a bug, and the bug goes away. Um, <laughs> so yeah, things like that do introduce uh, problems sometimes. Um, also, we, we're reverting back to using C groups v1 at the moment because, as Vadim mentioned, it's not the, the cluster code's not yet ready to to facilitate that. Uh, but yeah, and I, I do think uh, that won't be a huge issue for us, and we will always be able to configure it in a way that you know that makes it work again. So I don't see that as a huge problem. Sure. Well, uh, yeah, we're doing the Fedora one. is going to be what we're, we're pushing to. So, uh, and, you know, that's, that's key. But we do, uh, a lot of people ran Origin on CentOS, a lot. Um, and th so there was a lot of questions about that. So I wanted to make sure we went on the record that we would support them doing it. But it's the them that has to come to the table to do it. They have to provide, provide the, 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 the hours, the, the man and woman power. Uh, of collaboration. That would be wonderful to do. So we can get that up there on the list to talk about and get done. And I didn't post a date for the next one, but it's probably in two weeks from now um, on a Tuesday morning. So I'll send out that. So if anybody hasn't joined the Google group yet, um, do so today. And um, so there you'll get the announcements there. But you can always go to that community page and look up, um, and I'll update it shortly once we all check our travel schedules and see when the next one, next time we can all get together. Yes, but that's, that's really what we, did you have um, an issue template? I yeah. don't know, we don't have it yet, but there will be an issue template on the, in the OKD repository. So uh, the OKD repository in the OpenShift organization on GitHub is the place for you to file bugs and everything, and we'll triage it and open Bugzilla's um, internally and you know, refer that, those bugs to the, to the respective team uh, to, to get it fixed. So uh, yeah, anything uh, technical issues, okay, the OKD repository on GitHub. 